Mariner's third base position is a cause for concern. Why is it such a concern? You will find out after a word from our sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is a mobile ticketing app for sporting events, concerts, and other events. They make the buying experience easier by the app ranking each ticket from 0 to 10 to see if you are getting a good deal, and you can see exactly where you are sitting. I regularly use that app, and I have had nothing but a fantastic experience with SeatGeek. Use my promo code ROOFTOPSPORTS to get $20 off of your first purchase. Link to the code, app, and website will be in the description, so take advantage, and thank you. And then the other update is about Luis Urias, where at least he did play today. He got in at bat, but before that, he wasn't looking too good. And the other red flag I've got on him, which I am finding very concerning, is he showed up the camp out of shape. And usually when you're out of shape and it's March, it's not like you can really flick the switch on that one. So that one I'm nervous about because even if he can hit, but if he's not healthy enough, that may hamper his defensive abilities, which I'm very concerned for third base on on the third base because we lost Suarez, Seager retired, and now we're down to Urias and the platoon of Josh Rojas. And I don't know exactly if this is going to work out where you have Josh Rojas as a platoon and maybe Luis Urias, who's already banged up and reportedly out of shape. I mean, Trident, I mean, what, what do you think about this whole Luis Urias situation? Well, I mean, good to see that he was... Did he play third base today, actually, he in the did, game? Statistically speaking, he did play third base, but I don't know for okay. sure how he did because I wasn't able to watch the game or even yeah. listen to the game. Same. So, But he did... But he was in at third base. So that's, that, that's good. Um, listen, I think, you know... You can throw all you they got Brian Anderson in camp, you've got Michael Chavis, you've got Samad Taylor, so you've got a lot of names that could fill that role. And I've said in my videos, regardless of what you think of Luis Urias, he probably is the best bet to you know be the best player of that group of right-handed hitters that can play third base. So him getting back is a good thing. I, I think we can all agree with that based on what the roster is right now. Um, you know, with that said, I had the same thoughts as you when I read the out of shape thing. Um, I will put a caveat on that. That was also the same article that mentioned brash could be out for the year. So who knows, you know, like we talked about a little bit, but you know, you would think a guy that's been DFA, that's been kind of, you know, bounced around that had a rough year last year. That's the last person you want to see. I mean, you don't want to see anybody coming out of shape, but those are like, really dude, like you came in out of shape. Like you should be the most in shape player trying to get, you know, back to your form of a couple of years ago. Um, so, you know, I will say I'm, I'm glad he's playing third. I do think the Mariners need uh, him to be healthy. Um, I mean, he does have an option left. You could start him in Tacoma and go with Brian Anderson uh, with Rojas to start the year. If you think Anderson might be a little better as a veteran, you could have Dylan Moore play there um, as well. So you do have some options there. They're all kind of kind of like with the relievers. They're all kind of a pile there. I do think Urias is your best bet. Um, so hopefully it looks like he's back playing third base. So it looks like he should be ready for opening day. So that is um, a good thing overall. As for Brian Anderson, which I did look at his numbers, he does strike out quite a bit Oof. in 96, games, <laughs> la in 96 la games last year, 36 walks only 108 strikeouts. If you play 162 games, you're basically another Eugenio Suarez production type without the home runs. So <laughs> I don't think I'm, <laughs> I'm not excited about that. Yes. He had like a 20 home run season, but that was 2019 and he still struck out like a mofo, but it leads me to come up with this idea. And I think it's, I don't know if it's considered a crazy idea, but how about this? Well, now here's the first least crazy idea. Depending how Ryan Bliss does, or Cole Young. Now let's go over Ryan Bliss. Ryan Bliss, who's been playing pretty decent, not really showing some pop, but he's more of that speed kind of guy. Maybe if he gets the call up, maybe you can play him at second base and maybe play him at third base and play Polanco at third base. So maybe that's another idea. Now, what I think needs to happen is Ryan Bliss has to perform. I think his batting average needs to be well above 400 
to really get the attention of Scott Service and Jerry Depoto and Hollander to be like, okay, we'll we'll give you a chance. But I think personally, I think it's a long shot. And I think the other long shot idea is depending how Cole Young does, do the Mariners dare to even give him a chance? Now, the reasons why you might do it, because he has shown a lot of upside. He has shown some power. He's a very fast player. He does get on base. But the thing is, he has only played in A+. plus. So I think that would be quite a leap. And I think the last player who made that kind of leap before, I think it was either Mike Zanino or J Dustin Ackley. And back then, in retrospect, they it was considered rushed on when on when they played him and called him up. I mean, I mean, what do you think of the idea of possibly calling up the Ryan Bliss or Cole Young if worse comes to worse? Yeah, I think Bliss would be the most likely, you know, to, to at, b between the two of them. Um, I, I think he's just a little ahead in the development. Cole Young's looked tremendous, though, in spring training. I've been really impressed, um, you know, how he's fared in spring training. He looks the part. Like, you, you know, some guys can just kind of watch them and you go, that looks like a major league baseball play. You know what I'm talking about, right? There's just certain guys that Cole Young has that feel. You watch him and you go, that, that guy's got it. There's just something about it. Watching him, you just feel like that is a major league player. Um, I just can't imagine it, any scenario. Because isn't he playing shortstop in the minors? And for the most part, I don't think they're going to change positions up on him. So he I'd mostly, say Cole Young. Yeah. He mostly plays a uh, shortstop. Okay. So, yeah, I would put that as very, very unlikely. Um, like I said, I've been super impressed with Cole Young uh, in spring. And Ryan Bliss, uh, you know, maybe. I, I think what they would do, I, I think before they do anything with prospects, I, I put prospects in quotes because Bliss is kind of like on the edge of prospect versus graduated. You know, Cole Young's like a legit prospect. I don't think they're going to do anything crazy with him. But with Bliss, I think what they would do first Let's say Urias isn't ready. They're not impressed. I think you would see Brian Anderson or Dylan Moore, Samad Taylor, Michael Chavis, someone like that initially um, get those at bats would be my guess before they just hand it to Bliss. And, and they're going to give Urias an opportunity. I mean, they they traded for him, and you know Jerry's not going to just you know, throw that away. They're going to try to make Urias work. So I would say both those guys, you know, I think it's going to take at least a month before in, in triple a before bliss is up. Um, and then Cole young, I really don't know what the ETA is. I will say that, like I said, I've been impressed enough in spring training that it wouldn't totally shock me. If we saw Cole young this year, I still think next year, but I mean, and I, and I shouldn't overreact to just a few spring training games, but Cole Young has really, really impressed me, but I, I don't see any way he makes it. And Bliss is more likely, but I still think that they would go with um, one of those other guys. And I think that's fair. I, I think if you have a plan for Ryan Bliss, um, I like what you said, you know, if it really fails, you Bliss in second, Polanco to third. I think that's something we may see May, June, if the Rojas Urias platoon is just not working out in any way then i could see it them doing something but i think initially they'll stick with with what they've got i think i mean this whole urias thing if he's out of shape and everything and i was thinking colton wong was bad but like the worst case scenario like i'm seeing this as a situation where we might miss colton wong i think that's how i'm feeling about this whole thing and he's not doing great in spring training either so, that, I mean, it's just something to to really pay attention to because that third base really does make me nervous. And other solutions that we've also heard of, Ty France may be playing third base, which I wouldn't even tinker with that. Yes, yeah. he may have gotten some of his athleticism back from his driveline workout, but I just don't see it happening, knowing that he's playing first base. And then, then you got to move luke rayleigh to first base yeah so i i think and then that means mitch hanniger that's gonna put more pressure on him yeah to play a little bit more so i think the whole ty france thing I, I wouldn't even tinker with that personally yeah i couldn't agree more um one i mean you already got ty france like you talk about going driveline 
getting back in a little better shape. I, I think there's enough pressure on Ty France as it ends. Cause, cause really that's, it's a big make or break year for Ty France, not just to help the Mariners, but probably for his career, to be honest. Cause if he hits like he did last year, he's going to be getting a non-roster invitee somewhere next year. Like he's just not going to stick. So I think moving positions on him is just putting too much on Ty. And like you said, I think it just creates too many, too much movement. Then you got to put Rayleigh at first. Then you've got, you've got to rely on Hanniger and Canzone more as everyday players. It just creates like five moves by doing that one. Whereas the other way with going with bliss or something really doesn't create any more moves. It's just that move essentially. So yeah, I'm with you. I wouldn't, I mean, if it's an emergency and like, Hey, Ty France can play third base, then fine. Like that's what you got to do. But in terms of actually doing that for this roster, I, I'm with you. That that's a no for me. Yeah, I, I I think we can put that away, and unless the Mariners <laughs> are willing, <laughs> I, unless the Mariners can, maybe they can go out and go out for a trade because we just saw that the Giants signed Matt Chapman, which I remember that that whole time I was begging on my knees, like please Mariners, just please do it, like do some stupid deferral Shohei Otani contract or just do something with like a player option, just anything because. I really do feel that this team isn't that far away from at least returning to the playoffs. And at least if you have Matt Chapman, at least that just gives some kind of hope. But it seems that John stands like, nope, we are sticking to this payroll. I am not bending any rules for anyone. No exceptions. Well, at least he's sticking to his guns, I guess. So I, I, I won't get on them too much for not giving Matt Chapman that contract. I mean, I wasn't against it. Had they done it, I, I wouldn't have been like, oh, how could you? Because I'm with you. I do think Matt Chapman, if you had to ask me like, Jay, who do you think is the best option in third base in 2024? You give me the Urias Rojas platoon. You give me Bliss, Anderson, and Matt, Ch whoever, you know, all these guys. And Matt Chapman, gun to my head, I'd probably say Matt Chapman is the best bet. But I will say, if you take a, you look at Matt Chapman last year outside of March, April, he had an 84 WRC plus. So his offense really fell off. We should not eliminate his best month. That still counts. But uh, the defense is great. You know, you're going to get great defense with Matt Chapman. But 20 million this year, 18 next, 16 with a player option that if he sucks, he's gonna he's going to exercise that option. So you're going to be stuck. Uh, you know. <sighs> I don't know. I I can live that they passed on Matt Chapman there, to be honest. Um, I, I don't think it's like a terrible deal for the Giants. One thing you could do is J.D. Davis could be available from the Giants now, so you could look at doing that. But um, but I do agree with you in terms of like upgrading third base. I do think Matt Chapman would, at least for 2024, have been a, a better bet. So I, I do think it's fair for people that wanted Chapman. I think maybe that I did look at, Think of that J.D. Davis, because if Matt Chapman's on the Giants, that does leave room for him to get traded. And he did have a decent season last season, 18 home runs, batted 248 with a 325 on base percentage, but he struck out 152 times. So tough to see the Mariners really like reeling any of their prospects, because right now the best prospects that the Mariners have right now, like best premium prospects, they can't even drink and they, they do have a lot of upside. Like Johnny Farmello has shown some, mm -hmm. some flashes of potential. We have Harry Ford, Cole Young, Colt Emerson, Lazaro Montez. There's a lot of exciting prospects. Felmine Celestine who hasn't even started yet, but I think ultimately I really think like we all agree. They really are going to try with that Urias project. And maybe Dylan Moore at third base or Samad Taylor, or I don't know. But I'm I get the 2019 feels is how I'm feeling because that's exactly what happened when Seeker was injured. They had to like they had to mix it up with like Ryan Healy, who was never a third baseman. Oh, I remember watching him play defense. It was he was it rough. was bad. I, it, I, I do think it can work with the Arias Rojas platoon. Um, you know, it was, it's not like Urias is totally far removed from being a productive player and he was injured off and on last season. So I do think you can get a bounce back from him. Rojas has looked solid so far in spring and was solid in the second half last year with the Mariners. So I don't think it's crazy that you could get decent production. 
Um, you know, I, now I also think it's very possible that that is a God awful platoon that doesn't work out at all. So I, I certainly will, will respect that there is a wide spectrum to that. And I don't see them getting JD Davis. though I brought up JD Davis just because like, it's another trade. They already traded something for Urias. Now I'm not, you know, gung ho for Isaiah Campbell or anything, but it is, you know, a, a decent player that they gave up. So I don't see them making another trade. I, I think they're getting Urias back out there. And I think that was their game plan is Urias Rojas. Um, I could absolutely see it working out. I, I do think it can. I could see it bombing completely as well. Uh, but I think there's enough production there that if you get the right production from everybody else, I, I, I think it can be fine. We'll, we'll see in a few weeks here. <laughs> we will absolutely see. And we have talked quite a bit just on Matt Brash and Urias, but they were both very heavy, sensitive topics because injuries to our one of our best bullpen pitchers and a possible injury or someone not looking good for our, one of our more critical pieces that the Mariners really need to figure out eventually.